Why am I in a field? What the heck? What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is probably one of my favourite episodes so far, it's absolutely hilarious. So I really want you guys to enjoy it, we're going to get right into it now. Hmm, there's tons of people standing here. Move along, citizens. Move along. There's nothing to see here. That's what you call nothing to see. I'd like to know what something to see looks like. <laughs> Something's going on. By the keys of St. Peter. This is all I need. We'll have to send word to Sir Hanosh. That might not be necessary. Who are you? I'm Henry of Scalitz, in the service of Hanosh's Captain Bernard. I'm investigating the attack at Neuhof and... I think this could be related. Well, I'm the bailiff of Auschwitz. And I say we don't want any of that kind of trouble around here. What makes you think this has anything to do with Neuhof? One of the folk at the stud farm recognized someone from Auschwitz among the bandits. We have no bandits or murderers around here. Really? They say you had a limp? Shit. Well, allow me to introduce you. To Limpy Lubosch. Oh, did I come too late? Or all that's left of him. He's dead. Maybe I could have come faster, I don't know. Jesus Christ. Oh, oh sacra. Oh, nothing's ever easy. Oh. I'll have to take a look around and ask a few more questions, if that's reference. all right with you. You can take this mess off my hands and welcome to it. As for what else there is to find out, I don't know. But look and ask all you like. Jesus, man, that was horrific. Limpy Lubosch, like butchered Lubosch, Jesus. My God. <laughs> who is Limpy Lubosch? When was the body found? Yeah, who was he? Who was Limpy Lubosch? A poor crofter and a scoundrel. Can't say I'm too surprised what happened to him. Really? He kept company with all sorts of vermin. He was always getting into some kind of trouble. Punch-ups in the tavern and what have you. Right. Why did he limp? How come he limped? He got that from some villainy or brawl a long time ago. Has he been up to anything suspicious lately? Hmm. I don't know. The last few days he didn't go anywhere. He was home the whole time. But he always kept everyone in the village at arm's length. Right, okay. Did he have any cronies? Did he have any kith or kin in the village? Mm, none. A loner he was. I don't know the last time I saw him with anyone. Where was he on the night Newhoff was raided? Do you happen to know where he was on the night of the Neuhof raid? I've no idea. He kept his distance from other folk, so you never knew if he was away or holed up at home. You don't know much, do you? When was the body found? When did you find the body? And did anyone see anything? Just now. And nobody saw or heard anything. I don't know how they could gut him like that without someone hearing him scream. Jesus, yeah. Almost like what uh, Sir Radzik said about fear tactics. God. Let me ask some of these people about the situation. Can you tell me anything about Libosh? I've come in the name of Sir Hanish of Leiper. I'm investigating the massacre in Neuhof, and now a murder here as well. Can I ask you a few questions? I don't know how I can help you, but ask if you must. Right. Who was this Lubosch and who was murdered? Who was this Lubosch who was murdered? You could see at first glance he was no good. I kept well out of his way. Right, okay. You noticed anything suspicious? Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? There wasn't sight or sound of him for a long time. 
And then yesterday, he turned up at the church and even talked to the parish priest. I never saw him do that before. Probably had a bad conscience. Okay, should we have to talk to the parish priest? What about Lubosch? What was he doing the day of the Neuhof raid? Do you know what Lubosch was doing the day Neuhof was raided? I don't think he was home. I didn't see him all day. Okay, that gives us a bit of a hint. Who did he meet with? Do you know who Lubos used to spend time with? Kin or friends? As far as I know, he had nobody at all in this world. That's all. Thank you. All right, guys. So I've pretty much spoken to everyone here, hell? and all I know is that he usually hangs around in the tavern. He's been going to church and speaking to the priest. Maybe he had a guilty conscience. So we'll go and ask the priest next. But oh, oh God, we actually go in here. Jesus. Lord above, they did a hell of a job on him. Must have been agony. How come no one heard anything? What's this? Looks like someone's hit him very hard on the head. Could they have bludgeoned him to death and then gutted him? That would explain why he didn't scream. That would. Lord above, they did a hell of a job on him. What's this? Looks like someone's hit him very Let's hard. Let's have a little look around the house and see if we can. Could they have blood Easy lock piss and then pick it. chest. Oh, I'm definitely going to steal some of this stuff. Let's close this door and see if we can lock pick this chest. There's definitely going to be something in here. I just have to lock pick it and find out what it is. There's nothing else in the rest of the house. Right. Usually, when the gold area is here, by the way, it makes it super hard to do. So. The gold area being just here will make this a bit easier for us to just leave it in this location as we turn it. Slow and steady wins the race with this lock picking system, in my experience. Yes, unlocked it. I just like swiftly did the last bit there. Took me like a few attempts, but it's actually nothing in here. Apart from stuff I can obviously sell. Okay, let's get out of here. Ah, unfortunately, nothing which, you know, gives us any evidence as to what's gone on here. Maybe if I check this little outhouse here, there could be something here, I don't know. Nope, nothing I can really see. I think that was some vomit on the floor there. <laughs> Maybe this house? Can't get in that one. This one here? Ah, another chest. Yes, unlocked. I'm getting better at it now. We could go sneak mode because this is actually robbing. Steal all. Great. So you guys can see from the map here, we have to search, find out more about Limpy Lubosch. Currently, our only line of inquiry is the priest at the church. There was also a lot of mention about the pub in Ushitz, because he used to hang out there quite a lot. So I might also try out there, but the search area is like, he could be anywhere. <laughs> Just ask around everywhere, basically. So let's um, head over to this church. Right, so here we are, we're at the church. It's late at night now, so maybe... I don't know if we're allowed to go in here at this time. Yeah, it's open, okay. I'm gonna get my torch out, because it's pretty damn dark in here. This must be the priest, Father Godwin. See if we can convince him to tell us. Um, oh, do you have any work for me? Do you have any work that needs doing? My dear lad, I have more worries than I can bear. Another pair of shoulders would ease my burden. I have to deal with a local witch. A witch? <laughs> the right. herb woman, old Gertrude. That devious hag who will stoop to anything. Like all herbalists, for that matter. Oh, don't tell me. The cows are giving blood instead of milk, and babies are being born with two heads and a tail. This is no laughing matter. Gertrude isn't evil. She just has peculiar ideas about what's good for people. A little bird told me she incited some Ujets women to witchery. I think people don't like herbalism because it's not really understood. 
A little bird told you. <laughs> a little bird told you, did it? You know how good people are at seeing the splinter in another's eye and not the beam in their own. In other words, someone's been gossiping. What's the problem? And what's the problem? As long as herb women stick to giving psychic to folk and bloated cows, assisting in childbirth, or burning incense in bedrooms to help with sleep, then nothing at all. But this, this is sacrilege, and it's unsafe. All sorts of molds and lichens and poisonous plants and other foul things go into those concoctions. I'd hate to see her poison some poor gullible lass. Right, so what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I want you to go and see her and find out what she's been up to. I know she lives in fear of the Holy Church, so tell her I sent you. That will make her talk and think twice about encouraging witchcraft. If you learn that she truly did involve folk in some foolishness, find out all you can and deal with it. Right, okay. I'll gladly help. Maybe if we can't speech option Limpy Lubosch and find out more about it from the priest, doing this quest will make him like us more and that's another way to do it. Consider it done. Good. And never fear. I'm a man who always pays his debts. You'll find Gertrude, the old herb woman, in the woods. Right, okay. Playing with the devil is the quest. Let's ask him about good the day to you. Lubosch, though. Can I ask you a few questions? The blessings of our good lord be with you, father. I'm here in the name of Sahanish of Lyper, investigating the massacre at Neuhof, which seems to be connected to a murder here. Can I ask you a few questions? It seems Sir Hanush is employing children as investigators. But ask as you wish, boy. I hope this nasty business will be cleared up quickly. Did you know Lubosch? What was he like? A bit of a lost soul. Simple, rough fellow, but at heart I don't think he was such a bad person. Right. Did you notice anything suspicious? Did you notice anything suspicious recently? My child, all sorts of suspicious things have been going on recently. People like Lubos don't know what to do about it, and sometimes they do stupid things. That's really not a lot of help to me, Father. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, great. Uh, what was Lubos doing on the day of the Newhoff raid? Do you know what Lubos was doing on the day Neuhoff was raided? Unfortunately, I do know. And I'd like to help you with your investigation, but I can't. What? What? I'm bound by certain vows that forbid me to tell you. Vows more important than catching dangerous murderers? There are laws of God above the laws of man, son. And one of those is the sanctity of the confessional. Okay. There has to be some exception. This guy's literally murdered people. Father, surely you can't be serious. There must be situations in which you can make an exception. There are things that apply always, no matter what the circumstances. And this is one of them. We've got... We don't have... How can we do this? I'll get that confession out of you by force. You could be condemning innocent people to death. You can't hurt him now. Yeah, he's dead. But Lubosh is dead. You can't hurt him. But if you don't tell me, more innocent people may die. If I told Damn. you, I would be betraying a vow that's a cornerstone of the Holy Church. If people believed the sanctity of the confessional couldn't be trusted, the consequences would be even worse than that. Worse than the death of innocent Christians. Worse than the murderer escaping punishment. No one escapes punishment. Lubosch was my only lead. Father, Lubosch was my only lead to the Neuhoff raiders. Only he could tell me who was responsible for that massacre. If I don't find out who it was, it will probably happen again. Surely you wouldn't want that. I wouldn't. But I can't betray the sanctity of the confessional. I'll tell you what. Give me some time and I'll try to think up some way of helping you. Suppose we talk it over in the evening, in the tavern, over a cup of good wine. Maybe we'll come up with something. All right. Thank you, Father. I guess in the meantime... Oops, I hit my mic there, sorry. I guess in the meantime, we can do his quest and also go and find that horse. Or actually, maybe I should go to the tavern, because he's literally heading over there right now. So that's perfect timing, really. It's late enough in the afternoon for me to do this. Yeah, this is the tavern right here, so I assume he's about to run over. Let's just hang around here. Yeah, he's coming over. Great, 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 great. This is perfect. We'll talk to him once he's in the tavern. I want to have a go at this dice game with this villager. Um, just to, we, we played a little bit of this before. Uh, right, so we can... 
I will pay you 3.6, 3, 4.1. Okay, right. I win. I, I'll be back in two and I got four groceries, nice. Right, now where's the priest? I need to find him. Maybe he's inside. Yep, there he is. Nice. Let's sit down here. Have a look. Here you are. And good health. Talk. I'm sorry I can't tell you everything. But maybe we can work something out. But first I'd like to hear something about you, my son. With whom do I have the honor? Where are you from? Oh, this is a sad story. I'm from Scalitz. I'm from Scalitz. Oh. I'm sorry. What about your kin? All dead. Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Here. We'll drink to them. <laughs> it must have been terrible. So depressing. Uh, I like how it's got a timer here as well. I mean, it was, yeah. It was terrible. It seemed so pointless. We had no warning. They just appeared and began the slaughter. God knows why. They killed anyone who didn't make it to the shelter of the castle. My parents, my girl, even the Deutsch who was on Sigismund's side. I didn't make it to the castle. I wanted to try and help my parents, but there was nothing I could do. Then I fled to Talmberg with the Cumans on my heels. They almost killed me. They slaughtered people in the surrounding villages. There was a pile of bodies in front of a church in Rovno. Folk who tried to take refuge there, but they... They... My poor child. May God grant them eternal rest. And how did you come to get this assignment? I'd have expected Sir Hanish to send that old grouch, Bernard. Uh, yeah, he did send him. I think if we can guilt trip him with all of this information, maybe he'll tell us. He did, but I found a witness and the trail led here to Ujit, so he sent me here to follow it up. Ah, well, congratulations. It's nice to see what someone using their head to find things out instead of torture. We'll have to drink to that. Now the most important thing. I'd like a beer. What actually happened at Noyo? The good folks here about are saying all kinds of terrible things. But I take most of it with a pinch of salt. This time, yeah, they weren't exaggerating. The rumors aren't exaggerated this time, unfortunately. The Neuhof stud farm was raided by bandits, but they didn't come to pillage or even take the horses. They only wanted to kill. They maimed the horses and slaughtered some people. I'm sure they would have killed more, but the bandits quarreled among themselves and broke off the attack. And judging by what's left of our Lubosch, they're still settling accounts. I see it's every bit as bad as people claimed. Dreadful. Well then, here's to those poor souls who had to die so pointlessly and so terribly. I've told you all about me. Now it's your turn, Father. You don't look much like our parish priest at home. Well, we've had an agreeable chat, but now let's get down to business. So, about this confessional seal. Do you really want more innocent people to die? Exactly. Henry, that's not how it works. There are matters in which you can't make exceptions because if you do it once, you'll forever be tempted to do it again. If people stop believing in the church because their confessional secrets are betrayed, they won't trust anyone, and that's worse than even the most hideous crime. I think it is. You're making excuses. Coming. You are. I don't know, he's got a point. And it means I've reached a dead end. I understand, but that means I've reached a dead end. Those cutthroats will strike again and I can't stop them. Chin up, lad. I might have a solution. Oh, okay. Well, if I tell you what Lubos told me, I'd be betraying the confessional secret. But... First thing tomorrow, I'll try something I think might help you. Word of honor? On my soul. Hmm. I always wondered about the things a priest tells his congregation. Where is do you get the ideas for your sermons? Well, Ujits isn't Prague. It's not enough to instruct people. They have to be entertained, too. If I only read from the Bible, I'd soon be preaching to an empty church. <laughs> Our priest wasn't exactly a bard. So what do you preach to your flock about? It has to be something topical. Condemning vices. And of course, describing them in detail. A 
tongue lashing about the two popes goes down well these days. And stories from real life with a nice moral to them are popular as well. Especially if they're about fornication and similar scandalous vices. Can you give me an example? <laughs> well, recently a priest by the name of Jan Hus started preaching in Prague in the Czech language, and the people liked it. I hear he always has a full house. A journeyman who heard him told me what Hus is preaching, and I like the sound of it. I'm thinking about putting it in my own repertoire. What's so amazing about it? The preaching of Master Jan Hus about Mother Church. The lamentable wealth like in which beer. the church is drowning has turned to poison. And nearly the whole of Christendom is contaminated. Just like a flock of hungry ravens, they settled on this land to devour every grain of gold and silver. Mm -hmm. They know no mercy. Their hearts are corrupted by longing for wealth. And they shamelessly profit from everything. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. What if the devil himself were to pay? Would he ascend to heaven too? With such money gained from the poor, they buy beautiful horses to ride and needless servants to pamper them. They gamble at dice and dress their whores in expensive fur. While Jesus Christ walked barefoot and had no place to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor. For you are seen by God and his people, too. Amen. Well, this Jan Hu's character is quite a rebel. Oh, the congregation will love it. Yeah. I don't doubt it. Let's drink to that. Funny. That last bit reminds me of someone. What do you mean? My situation is completely different. Who <laughs> preaches against the prelates and the clerics who are robbing the poor? Look at me. I don't have a pot to piss in. I know better off than the folk I preach to. I'm one with them in poverty and suffering and everything that troubles them. I drink with them and curse those stuffed habits in Sasal Monastery. Don't you think it's a bit odd when someone boozes and lives in sin with a woman and then criticizes the Pope for, be for, for debauchery? No, I don't. <laughs> what do you think of Huss? What do you think of this Jan Hus? He's certainly a wise man. A little overzealous for my taste. If he got out of Prague and came here for a look, I'm sure he'd stop Won't condemning beer. drinking and lying with women. I'd like a beer. Where can I find out more about his teachings? Do you like it? I copied down some of his sermons. If you're interested, you can read them at my presbytery. Right. Uh, what are folks saying about it? What do the common folk think of it? They like it. They're happy to hear someone say what they think themselves, but are afraid to say aloud. Things that make them angry. And they're calling for change. In a few years, it'll have grown beyond control. You mark my words, the people will rise up and the church will be shaken to its very foundations. Yeah, unless they burn him at the stake first. Nonsense. They can't burn a master of the most respected university in Europe. Right, enough about preaching. Thanks for the sermon, but I think I've been morally uplifted enough. Oh, it's getting quite late. What are your plans, Father? What do you suppose? We have a drink, of course. <laughs> I'd say that's a good plan. Ah, that sounds like a good plan. Let's get him drunk. I knew you wouldn't let me down. That's the oh, you've reached a new level in drinking. You've learned university. Interesting. The only way we're going to get the information is to get hammered with it. <laughs> you know, if we pass the speech check, we would have missed all of this. We're getting smashed with a priest. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Henry is such a player. Arm wrestling. Enough of this. Oh dear. 
Bailiff, come on over here. Sit down and have a drink with us. Don't vex me again, Father. It's three hours past dusk, and curfew is long gone. So what? So, I'll have you all whipped and put in the stocks, and I'll write a letter to the bishop about you, priest. Well, nothing to worry about then. Everyone knows the only one around here who can write is me. <laughs> Enough! Men, throw them out. Oh. Aww. Are we going to get a chance to fight? Damn it. You looking for a fight? Yes! Henry, back me up. We got this. <laughs> oh, here we go. I can't even see. I'm so smashed. Look how smashed I am. Oh, God. That's it. Oh, get wrecked. Oh, yeah. Oh, destroyed. Beat the crap out of him. It's so dark. Oh my god, it's so dark. I can't even see what's going on. Let me get towards the light here so I can... I am so drunk. I literally don't know what's going on. Climb the bell tower. I'd love to. Are we going to ring the bell with these girls? Right, Henry. Stop that nonsense, Godwin. Are you out of your mind? Let me open the door for you, bro. They can say what they like. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Oh. Here we are. Look at this beauty. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we can't do this, can we? Who says? <laughs> Get ringing, wench. <laughs> 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 Oh my god. This looks wonderful. Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, bloody elf. <sighs> and now, my dears, comes the climax of the evening. Kinky. <laughs> Thing we know is gonna happen next. <laughs> Godwin, you old goat. Come here. <laughs> Henry doesn't know what to do. So I think that's the first time. Why am I in a field? What the? <laughs> I've actually already done this in the first episode. I chased the sheep. I wasn't even Meh. drunk though. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what medieval life was like. Meh, Why is he chasing meh. me? Oh my god, I'm so fucked. What? <laughs> this is so well, ridiculous. I have to say that was a fine evening. I've got no clothes left. Godwin, you beast. Get up. Do you hear me? Wake up, you drunkards. Oh, where are we? Oh, get out. Oh, oh, where the... Oh, what the... Oh, who the hell are you? Oh, Henry. My great friend, Henry. Didn't we have a wonderful time? <laughs> well, you certainly did, you old lecher. Now you better pull yourself together quick. You haven't much time. There's some water and something to eat on the table there, but if I were you, I would move my hairy arse before my flock eats me alive. Oh, oh no. Step on in my head. Mm, my guts. Oh, my poor suffering stomach. Oh, what was that woman on about? Before my flock eats me alive, I've forgotten something. Oh, he's got to give a sermon. What have I forgotten? Where the fuck am I? What the fuck was it? Oh. <laughs> Mass! 
Oh, shit, I have to say mass. I gotta say mass. You have to help me. Oh, dear. Oh, you're the priest. I can't do it in this state. Maybe the liturgy. But I have to give a sermon as well. Oh, this is a disaster. They're gonna excommunicate me. I'd like to help you, but you can. You can do the sermon for me. Oh, what? Jesus. So, first, I investigate a murder no one wants investigated. Then I drunkenly keep the whole town up all night. And now you want me to preach at them from the pulpit? Do you want them to burn us at the stake? No. No, I've got it. Suppose it's Sir Ratzig's protege. You just came from studying in Prague. And you want to share the words of Master Jan Hus, who you recently heard preaching there. Henry, look. From what I remember, we might have overdone it a bit last night. And if the bailiff or someone else complains about me, the bishop's going to have my guts for garters. So I'd appreciate it. Stop gaping at me like a stuffed squirrel and start helping. You're mad. You're start raving mad. I'm not. This is Perfect fantastic. Perfect plan. It's flawless. <laughs> oh. How about this? If you help me with this, I'll tell you who Lubosh's cronies are. Ah, oh, finally. Yes, I need to put some clothes on, though. You've leveled up in drinking. New perk point available. Quest log update. Drinking binge. The confession still isn't sacred anymore? Yeah, good question. So all at once, the confessional seal isn't so sacred? Don't mock me. I won't give you a second chance. Okay, right. <laughs> all right, I can't guarantee the result. Let's do it. Well, all right. But I can't make any promises about what will happen. No, neither can I. What do you want me to do, exactly? I'll go and start the liturgy. Then I'll introduce you. You give the sermon I told you yesterday in the tavern, and that's that. No need to drag it out. This could be hilarious. Turns out well, I'll tell you what I know about Lubos. Christ almighty. Oh, it has to go well. Fine, then. We have a deal. Wonderful. Let's get to it. Then. I kind of remember what he said. Oh my god, I'm still a bit... Oh my god, I'm hungover. There's a hungover thing. Where the hell are my clothes? I'm fucking naked. Come on, Henry. Don't tell me you changed your mind. Where are my clothes? I lost everything. <laughs> Quickly, put on clothes. Did I even sleep last night? My energy's gone back up. Oh my god, I'm literally... The screen is so tilted right now. <laughs> what on earth? We, we drunkenly walked up this bell tower last night. Oh my god, I'm smashed. Villager, I'm so hung up. <laughs> oh my, this is ridiculous. <laughs> okay, we're late, so... Never show up. The swill pup. Look at him. He can hardly walk after his capers last night. You were with him, you beast. Just you wait. <laughs> Look at him. Mother of God. Any minute now, he'd throw up. Could you imagine this happening? Oh my <laughs> days. I couldn't sleep a wink last night with all that clamor. <laughs> at least In I got some clothes et fili et spiritus sancti. Amen. Accepit panem in sanctas at venerabiles a manus suas. <coughs> Hac facite in meam commemorationem. Brothers and sisters, you may have had the honor of meeting Henry from Scalitz, who is here at the behest of Sir Hanush to investigate that heinous crime at Neuha. You might not know that Henry 
recently visited Prague, where, by the grace of God, was able to hear Master Jan Hus from the esteemed Charles University preaching. I've managed to persuade Henry to stand here today in my stead and tell us what he heard. Because, as you all probably know, Jan Hus is a very popular preacher in Prague. So Henry, you may begin. Now I'm curious, curious which one of them will puke first. Um, I'm confident I'm going to begin this sermon confidently. Brothers and sisters, let me get straight to the point. I'd like to talk about the church and how corrupt it is. That well wants to preach about the church. Fail? Oh dear. Um, God stands at the head of the church. It seems like a good way to progress. Yes. One should not believe in the church because the church is not God. God is above all things and the church is but a means to salvation. Makes sense. Which the prelates do not care to hear. He's right. Yes. I think we're doing well. Okay. Continue harshly. It's going to get important now. So we've got to be harsh with our words. Yes. It is the corruption of God's pastors here on earth that has brought misfortune on our heads. Plague, cumans, hunger, and chaos. The accursed wealth that the church is drowning in is poisoning almost the whole of Christendom. When dogs are fighting over a bone, take the bone and they will stop. Just like the flock of ravens that has descended on this land to peck up every speck of gold and silver, they show no mercy. Their hearts are poisoned by covetousness. They trade everything. Everything is for sale. You want to baptize a child? Pay. You want to steal and murder? Pay and you will have absolution. And the prelates sin and give themselves absolution. For shame. Shame upon them. It's going well. It's going well. Okay. Talk about drunkenness, sin of fornication, no. Okay, yeah, to sin is human, that makes sense. It is the custom of the gluttonous prelates and monks to preach against sin. But what do they know of us ordinary folk? Let us remember the marriage at Cana, where our Lord Jesus Christ himself feasted with the other guests and drank his fill. And when the wine was gone, he performed a miracle and created more. <laughs> he, whose companions were poor so travellers, simple folk, prostitutes and troublemakers, performed a miracle so the feast could continue. Now that's the kind of sermon I like to hear. No, brothers and sisters. Jesus did not condemn alcohol. Drink to lighten the cross you bear in this veil of tears, but not with such abandon that you cannot keep holy the Sabbath. For there should be moderation in all things, and it is not drinking itself that is sinful, but intemperance and beastly indulgence. He's right! I think we got away with that one. <laughs> yeah, continue harshly. Look how smashed Henry is. Like, the animations are hilarious. <laughs> Enough about sin, which the prelates are so fond of preaching about, and whose absolution they promise if you only pay enough coin to Mother Church. What if the devil himself were to pay? Will the bishops tell us he too would ascend to heaven? Exactly. And what about those bishops? They sin without remorse, and with the money grasped from the poor for indulgences, they keep fine horses and hordes of servants to pamper them. They play dice and garb their mistresses in expensive furs, while Christ, the Lamb of God, walked barefoot and had nowhere to lay his head. Look to your consciences, you robbers of the poor, for you are seen by God and his people too. Down with the prelates! Away with them! We're fortunate to have our good father Godwin! At least he's a fair and simple man. How are you, Henry? Oh, things are going well. Um, try to conclude... Stand up for Goodwin, criticize the prelates, yep. God sees what is happening on earth, and he is filled with righteous wrath that those who should seek the salvation of souls instead seek mammon and the idle comfort of lucrative posts. Blessed are the shepherds who share the poverty of their flock, who are as one with you and bear with you the burden of this earthly pilgrimage, who do not condemn your venial sins. Aye, all honor to Godwin. Let him drink like one of us. That is all I heard in Prague. Amen. I think we nailed it. I think we... I think we did it. Silence. Everyone's very quiet. Uh, this is awkward. 
The lad spoke well, considering what a soak he is. Yes, he's right, that was. The young man shouldn't drink so much, but the Lord's given him a silver tongue. Oh, well, whoa! We did it! We failed one of the speech options at the start, but it was fine. We still said the right things. Nailed it. Well, well, my boy, you have talent, and I can't deny it. And you pulled a thorn from my side. I almost didn't make it. <sighs> yeah, I noticed. Well, I wasn't the only one. Well, what's to be done? I'll make it up somehow. So, about our bargain. Although it's a sin. Uh, so it's gluttony. And fornication. God <laughs> does forgive a penitent. So, what did Limpy Lubosh tell you? Was he at Neuhof that day? Who was with him? And, and, and where are they now? Yeah, yeah. Now slow down. I'm sorry, but he didn't tell me that much. Don't let me down after all I've been through. For you? Well, now Lubos came to me shortly after it happened. And his conscience was gnawing at him. And I must say, uh, in the end, he turned out to be a better man than he looked. He said they'd been hired through some crony of theirs. And at first, they were just to steal some horses. But then it all turned sour and people started getting killed. And neither he nor his cronies wanted anything to do with that. So they fell out from the gang and fled. Hmm. Fell out? Yeah, there was a body found in the woods by Neuhof. Um, that would explain something. Uh, Lubos kept jabbering that he wasn't a murderer, that he didn't want to do it. So I know that Lubos killed the murderer and he's dead too. <laughs> the trouble is... I need to find the ones who are still alive. Exactly. I need names and places. Did he mention any of the others? Uh, only nicknames. Uh, talked about some fella called Riki from Ledechko. Pious. Timmy. Pious. <laughs> that lot are about as pious as I am ordained. Nonsense. <laughs> you would make an excellent priest. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> and anyhow. With your skills, you ought to be able to sniff out this Riki from Ledechko, right? Well, we'll have to now. There's not much else to go on. Let's hope he's not hanging from the wall, too. <sighs> Indeed. And I'd hate to be excommunicated for nothing. Anyhow, good luck. You watch out for yourself. These people clearly mean business. And I'd like to raise a tankard with you again sometime. Yeah, I'll try. Although I'm not sure I'd survive another night of your debauchery. And if anyone should ask, you heard nothing from me. I'll deny everything. I don't doubt it. I'll deny everything. I love this book. <sighs> Games that other quest. I will go and do that quest at some point when we're nearby again. But um, for now, I wonder what Teresa's doing. I could stop by and see her again. I enjoyed it last time. Oh, okay, right. So go and see Teresa. Um, before we go and see Teresa, I'm going to stop by Townberg and we need to pick up this horse here. So let's put the marker over here and we'll just run over there right now, grab our horse. So guys, tomorrow's episode, I'm actually going to be finding all of the things Lady Stephanie asked me to find. And we're also going to go to Sassol and complete the monastery quest as well. So there's two quite big side quests actually to finish. And the actual reward you get for doing these quests is pretty damn hefty. So it's well worth your time doing it. I'll do the walkthrough in tomorrow's episode, then we'll carry on with the main quest in the episode after that. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Link to the next episode in the description below, and I will see you there. Goodbye.